Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Creation Podcast, a show where we discuss the science that confirms scripture. I'm your host, Ivana, and my guest today is Dr. Brian Thomas, ICR research scientist and paleobiochemist. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Thomas. It's my pleasure. Thanks. Well, Dr. Thomas, today I wanted to talk to you about transitional fossils. I think some of our audience might be familiar with that idea, but I know for you personally, you have a connection, um, especially to Archaeopteryx and how that relates to your story of understanding Christ and science. Could you explain that story with us? Right, sure. This was a big deal because when I was in zoology class Mm -hmm. and I was being taught evolution as true, Mm -hmm. evolution meaning you came from fish. That's what I mean when I say evolution. Yeah, I knew it. That's what my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my professors said. Wow. You know, uh, you came you came from fish, um, and here's the proof of it. And mm-hmm. they showed a picture of Archaeopteryx. Did my professor on the last day of class, no less, mm-hmm. saying, "If you don't remember anything else, remember this okay. fossil because it's proof of evolution. It's a it's a perfect transition between reptile and bird because it's got reptile features." And bird features all in one creature. Mm-hmm. It's an extinct bird mm-hmm. with with you know teeth in its beak and a few claws on its wings mm-hmm. and um, some extra bones in its tail, extra whatever that means. <laughs> and so these are supposedly reptilian features mm-hmm. or leftover from its reptilian evolutionary history. Mm-hmm. And I left that class persuaded that evolution has to be true because. Archaeopteryx is a transitional form, Mm -hmm. a transition between reptile and bird, exactly like what we would expect to see in the fossils if evolution is true, if we really did come from fish. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was was the story. Mm -hmm. And then later, a friend of mine challenged me on that. He challenged me to explain the details. And he said, Mm -hmm. do one of the questions he, you know, that came up in our conversation, do all evolutionists believe that this particular fossil named Archaeopteryx, mm-hmm. it's, it's from Germany, do all uh, you know of them believe that this was transitional? And I looked into it and found that it, the answer was no. Mm. There were some evolutionary scientists who looked at it and said, no, it's just an extinct bird. Yeah. Now, why would some say this is proof positive of evolution and it's the best example of a transitional form, mm-hmm. whereas other evolutionists say, no, mm, it's just a dead bird. <laughs> it's nothing yeah. to do with evolution. Yeah. It's so so why? And so that got me started on my journey from evolution to creation was mm-hmm. that very question about this very fossil. Mm-hmm. And so of course at the end of that journey I found different answers and I found that it, that should not count as a transitional fossil. Yeah. And we'll talk about why. Yeah, Hopefully. thank you. So I appreciate you just sharing there's a, a personal connection. It's we're not just trying to, you know, yell answers at people, but even for us in our own discoveries and understandings of science. So thank you for sharing that. And as we talk about transitional fossils or transitional forms, you can tell me which one is the correct way to say that. Um, I think it might be good just for some of our audience, what is the overarching definition? And so give us that definition, and then why are these so important? You kind of mentioned that in your story, but why are these important to the evolutionary view? Right, so um, there's there's going to be transitional form. It's a, it is a slippery definition, right? So, okay. it's so one person might mean one thing, when they mm. say it in one sentence. Okay. But that same person might mean something different when they say the same phrase in the very next sentence or paragraph. And they don't even know that they're swapping definitions, you know. Mm. Uh, and so so that's a problem that we need to overcome overcome by asking, well, what do you mean by transitional form? Mm-hmm. So you, if you're asking me, what do I mean by transitional form? Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to explain what it ought to mean. I'm not saying okay. everyone uses it in this way, but here's what it ought to mean. Okay. It ought to mean for evolution to have a transitional form. That means you have a body form mm-hmm. and it's it has features in this body form that are transitional between, between form A mm-hmm. and the same feature on form B. In other words, think of your arms as your forelimbs, mm-hmm. your front limbs. Okay. So if I'm a reptile, I got to go from Walking around on my front legs. Mm-hmm. Now I got to transition to bird. Well, they don't walk around on their f- no. front 
front limbs, they turn them into wings. Mm -hmm. So I have to turn my front limbs into wings. Okay. So the transitional form between reptile and bird ought to have a swing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? They should. It ought to have a transitional. We all should. It ought to have a transitional feature. Yes. That's that's not quite legs anymore, but yeah. not quite yet wings. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. Yeah. And it turns out every transitional form that's proposed as a transitional form mm -hmm. doesn't even have a legit transitional feature hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. So the Archaeopteryx, for example, it had fully formed wings mm -hmm. with flight feathers, feather impressions in the rock mm -hmm. and actually feather proteins there too, but that's mm -hmm. a different topic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've got to have a transitional form. Mm -hmm. It's got to have transitional features. So when my evolutionary colleagues say, oh, transitional form this, transitional form that, um, I, you know, I, I tend to want to ask them, well, what's transitional about that transitional form? Mm -hmm. If they're saying the Archaeopteryx is a transitional form, mm -hmm. which feature is transitioning? Mm -hmm. And then you, you zero in on that feature. Well, mm -hmm. the wings, well, they look fully formed. Okay, well, that's not transitional. Mm -hmm. Well, there's teeth in the beak. Okay, how is, how is that transitional? Mm -hmm. um, and so we can, we can talk about that. Yeah. Um, just a question as you're explaining that. Is there any maybe defense or explanation on the evolutionary side of why they haven't found the fwing, for example? Is, is there any yes. explanation? Oh, and this is rich. <laughs> yeah. So in the 1970s, uh, Stephen Gould and a co-author proposed a reason why we don't see any of the transitions. And by the way, if evolution really explains how fish turned into people over millions of years, mm -hmm. then we should we we have to do a lot of changes. I mean, to get a fish into a human form, mm -hmm. a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Every bone has to be recrafted, reshaped. You got to grow new arms, new legs. You got to you mm -hmm. know all these. You got to figure out how to do hair. Mm -hmm. Biochemistry has to be different. Um, most, therefore, of the fossils that supposedly trace our human ancestry back to some sort of fish. Mm -hmm. Most of those fossils ought to have a transitional form mm -hmm. with transitional features in them. You know, fin needs to become leg. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the evolutionary community, and especially Gould and colleague, got together and said, all right, this is a real problem. And they, to their credit, yeah. confronted the problem and said, we mm -hmm. expect to see most fossils transitional, but instead we see... Most fossils are mm -hmm. fully formed right. with all their features in place yeah. as though they were created. Mm -hmm. But creation is not an option because we have a bias against God and that doesn't sound scientific. So we're going to come up with punctuated equilibrium. Mm -hmm. So they proposed this. They made a phrase and they said, okay, here's what happens. Creatures reach a stable form and then that's when they get fossilized. Mm -hmm. And they undergo rapid spurts of evolution during which time they have all these transitional features, right. but that never gets fossilized. Right. <laughs> so how convenient. Yeah. To, they built a history yeah. that, um, that insulates their view mm -hmm. from the lack of evidence for their view mm -hmm. by saying, oh, well, we wouldn't expect to see any transitional forms because here's how evolution happened. It happened right. in these short, punctuated... They're shy, mm -hmm. so they're going to... Transition and then come back. Yeah, they, tra they transition <laughs> when that fossilization is not happening. Yeah. And then they reach a stable form with their fully formed features. That's when they form fossils. Yeah. So, uh, boy, and I don't, I don't see how. I mean, that's just clever imagination mm -hmm. is, is all that is. Okay, so you've explained some of these transitional forms and how that's supposed to show the changes between these creatures as they evolve. Um, and we mentioned Archaeopteryx as being one example that some evolutionists would point to. Um, we also have some supposed human ancestors like Homo habilis or um, Lucy. So could you explain maybe some of those additional examples and, and just some information about how they fit in if they are supposed human ancestors? Mm. Well, Homo habilis came on the scene uh, also in the 70s. Um, what scene is this? This is the scene where basically evolutionists need to find an example of a transition mm -hmm. from ape-like ancestor mm -hmm. to man. Mm -hmm. So what is that transition? Well, it's supposed to be a transitional form. And so what do you need to legitimize a transitional form? You need a transitional feature. 
Uh, so, boy, they're looking and looking and looking. Mm -hmm. And um, so Homo habilis came along with uh, human skull fragments uh, mixed with ape skull fragments in a bone pit. Uh, anyway, mm. so ape skull fragments found in a bone pit along with human tools. And the scientists who did the study, Mary Leakey, I think, she said, obviously, this ape was this ape who donated its skull fragment to this bone pile mm -hmm. was smart enough to use tools to butcher um, dinner. <laughs> yeah. And that was their conclusion. Now, have you ever heard of that? I have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you tell me, Ivana, what other interpretation could you put on the same evidence of ape skull fragments mm -hmm. with um, tools mm -hmm. mixed in the same uh, junk pile? Well, I wonder if two different things got thrown into the same hole. That's what I would think. Or could well, think. In other words, did the ape who, whose remains are there, did that ape, must that ape be the one who is responsible for the tools? We don't know that. What's his name on it might be a good question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I'm getting at is, what mm -hmm. if a person made the tool and right. ate the ape for dinner? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that fits the data. But that doesn't fit the need for a transition. Mm. So we built a story mm -hmm. around an ape skull fragment and a human tool, man-made tool. Um, that's the kind of, that's the level, that's the low degree of science that we're dealing with, mm -hmm. low quality of science. It's just, it's a lot of storytelling on a few fragments. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, a homo habilis, I think a lot of uh, paleoanthropologists have called it a junk bin, uh, mm -hmm. a category into which you can throw any kind of fossil. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's, it's supposed, to, it's supposed to be the transition from ape to human, but uh, every example of it is so fragmentary mm -hmm. that you can't draw any solid conclusions from it. Um, and what fragments we do have of either human or ape bones that are categorized as homo habilis, mostly mm -hmm. human, those are actually just humans. <laughs> so <laughs> they're already human. You know, human heads come in all kinds of different shapes more than any of the animals mm. the human heads have we have long broad narrow i mean so many different faces shapes mm -hmm. and the same was true with our ancestors so people in the past had right. very different looking faces mm -hmm. than some of us to do today so that doesn't mean they evolved it just means they're humans with mm -hmm. different shaped faces mm -hmm. so what we need is not a story told around a collection mm -hmm. of human fossils. We need to see an actual transition. Mm -hmm. For example, the back of the skull of an ape has this big hole in it into which the spinal column uh, connects. And that hole is called the foramen magnum. It's in the back. It's mm -hmm. back here. Okay. And so why, why is it in the back? Well, because they knuckle walk by habit. That's their preferred mode of locomotion, knuckle walking. So they're on mm -hmm. all fours. Mm -hmm. And if the, if the spine plugged into the bottom of the skull, if mm -hmm. the foramen magnum, the big hole, was in the bottom of the skull, like it is in humans, mm -hmm. then they'd be looking at the ground all the time mm -hmm. or craning their neck up to try to see walking. forward mm -hmm. as they're knuckle walking. In contrast, human skull has the foramen magnum on the bottom mm -hmm. because we walk upright. So we need to see a transitional, if, if there's really transitional form leading mm -hmm. from apes to humans, why don't we see, uh, you know, the frame and magnum migrating from the, from the back right. to the bottom? We don't. We, when we see a skull that's complete enough to even reposition the frame and magnum, it's either the ape position, mm -hmm. like in modern apes, mm -hmm. and in Lucy, ape position, where it's in the back of the skull, or that fossil skull has got the frame and magnum at the bottom. It's a human. Mm -hmm. So we see either or uh, when, uh, when evolution is looking for that transition mm -hmm. of almost and becoming. Yeah. But, the, but, but the real world is really bucking against the philosophy uh, of transitional forms. So in the absence of actual transitional features, 
there's desperate attempts to tell stories to mm-hmm. backfill the mm-hmm. need for transitional forms. But I'm waiting for some scientist to say, here it is, a transitional feature mm-hmm. in this transitional form, instead mm-hmm. of just saying, here it is, a transitional form with stories. Yeah. <laughs> So just to be clear, we don't have any evidence of a fully formed um, that link between the the human and the apes. Um, so you're saying when we find things, it's just fragments of something that they think is the transitional form, but there's not a fully formed anything out there. There, there's no there's no example I know of mm-hmm. of, of a transitional form that actually has a transitional feature mm-hmm. associated with it. Mm-hmm. It's just a, let's, let's do another example. Lucy. Mm-hmm. The transitional feature that was um, assigned to Lucy when it was first popularized in 1974 was Lucy, Lucy could have walked upright because Lucy may have had um, the human lumbar vertebrae. So your lumbar spine that's mm-hmm. in your, where is that pop quiz? I would assume lower back. Lower back. That's what everyone says with yeah. the chairs and stuff. Exactly, lumbar. Yeah. So it turns out that ape lumbar vertebrae are shaped and positioned. They're rigid, and their whole back is in the shape of a letter C, a, just a slight arc to it. Mm-hmm. So from neck to hip, it's a C. Mm-hmm. Whereas in humans, it's a letter S. Because mm-hmm. we have a, 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 a lumbar curve that they don't have. Mm-hmm. So... We need to have a transition from the C-shaped back to the S-shaped back. Mm-hmm. Where is that? Where are those transitional vertebrae? Mm-hmm. Lucy was claimed to have this was it, the transitional yeah. form here. But if you look at the original Lucy skeleton, guess what's missing? The lumbar vertebrae. They're not even there. <laughs> even though they were told we were told right. in the 70s yeah. by Donald Johansson, who by the way got fame funding Fortune and Glory, um, that he still enjoys to this day for the stories that he wrapped around his fossil. Mm -hmm. Um, Transitional, it's transitional. And so we're going, Lucy is becoming human. And that was the narrative. Mm -hmm. But his colleagues, plenty of his colleagues, have looked at the evidence since then and have determined, no, there's not even any vertebrae here. So we're not going to conclude that it was becoming human, that it was turning S-shaped. So, And since then, more of that that, that species... um, Australopithecus mm-hmm. afarensis have been found, and it's got the C-shaped back. Oh, it was an ape yeah. all along. Mm-hmm. So that's just another example. Yeah. I got more. You want more? Uh, let's do one more. Okay. Okay, so so the, another claim about Lucy. And when I say claim, I mean here is the claimed transitional feature. Mm-hmm. Human feet. Human feet. Lucy had human feet? Well, that means if you stick human feet on an ape body... Yeah. then you're transitioning to human, right? Because at least it's got human feet, okay. and then all you need is the human everything else, and you, boom, you got a human. Yeah. Um, so, But where did we get the idea that Lucy could have had human feet? And it comes from a series of trackways called the Laetoli tracks in Africa. And they were somebody was walking along in a, in a ash, uh, like near a, right after a volcano. So it's... It's ash-laden mud they're walking on. So it, it solidified and froze those tracks in place. Mm-hmm. And they are human tracks. Mm-hmm. 1970, um, I think, 8 or 9, the paper came out in Nature describing these as human, uh, perpetu- habitual, um, unshod. Habitually unshod means they didn't wear shoes. And they were upright walker, just like people. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the problem is it was in a, a layer that they assigned to an age Mm. that was not considered by evolutionary timelines in textbooks Mm -hmm. to be a time when humans had yet evolved. So Mm -hmm. therefore, it had to have been an ape walking like a man because it's the wrong time. Mm -hmm. Well, in the creation perspective, we're not limited by Mm -hmm. cute little diagrams that someone invented and put into books. Mm -hmm. So we can look at the actual evidence and say, you know what, maybe these human footprints were made by humans who had human feet. And in fact, I think that's what they were. Yeah. So, and since that time, more examples of Australopithecines have been found with actual foot bones. And guess what they had? Just like today's apes have hands for feet, mm-hmm. Lucy also had hands for feet. So the big toe is like a thumb, mm-hmm. whereas the Laetoli tracks have the big toe pointing forward. Mm-hmm. Only humans have that shape of a foot. Yeah. So these are human feet, made by humans. Mm-hmm. 
that's not transitional. It's just people walking around. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you for sharing that one. Um, so what it all comes down to is there's really little evidence for transitional forms. And if that's the case, what problem does that pose for evolution? And maybe how does that benefit the cause of creation science? Well, one thing I want to say about these transitions, um, in every case, an example put forward by our evolutionary colleagues, mm -hmm. this is a transitional form. In many cases, there's someone who stands to benefit from proposing and defending mm -hmm. a new transitional form. Mm -hmm. You can get that published because there's a, thousands and thousands of scientists who want some kind of evidence to support their mm -hmm. belief mm -hmm. in evolution. That's their bias. They have a bias, and we do too, mm -hmm. um, and that's okay. You can't get away from biases. But we want to examine those biases themselves. But for every proposed transition, there's another evolutionist who says, no, I don't think that's transitional at all. It looks like an evolutionary dead end, mm -hmm. or it looks like it's fully formed. Mm -hmm. Where's the transitional feature on that supposedly transitional creature? Mm -hmm. And every single one is disputed down the line. And so we've documented that in our, in our materials. We've got a book called The Fossil Record, mm -hmm. co-authored by Dr. John Morris and Frank Sherwin. And in that, it's got an appendix where Frank um, went through and quoted from the evolutionists themselves. Mm -hmm. One guy says, or gal, this is transitional. And the next says, it's not transitional. And we, mm. do, we do that for like 100 examples of supposed transitional yeah. forms. Yeah. So what's the takeaway? Um, evolution needs transitions. Mm -hmm. Evolution ought, if it's true, if we came from fish, mm -hmm. we ought to see the fossil record have mostly transitions. Mm -hmm. But it, but it doesn't. It has mostly fully formed. And of the transitional, fo transitional fossils that are proposed, they're all disputed. That's the, that's the reality of the situation. So where does that leave us? It leaves us with a world that looks like it was created with creatures that reproduce according to their kinds, just mm -hmm. like Genesis says. Mm -hmm. You know, evolution is a direct assault on the 10 times that Genesis 1 says according to its kind. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's supposed to make more of X. Mm -hmm. If it's creature X, it'll... The, the next generation will be okay, more of that same creature. X. It'll be yeah. fully formed. Mm -hmm. Now, there's variations. You know, you can twiddle with this. There's there's adjustment knobs genetically mm -hmm. um, that they that they deploy between generations. Still do today, but we still recognize a dog, whether it's a coyote or even a, even a poodle, as mutated as they are. <laughs> <laughs> they still look sorry, like sorry poodle fans. Sorry poodle fans. They look. They still look like, and you recognize it as a dog. It mm -hmm. has the basic dogness to mm -hmm. that form, mm -hmm. and so that's what we see in the fossils. We mm -hmm. see according to kinds type mm -hmm. of features uh, yeah. on these forms. So that's. So in other words, the fossils and today's creatures both um, vindicate those ancient words in Genesis one yeah. that creatures reproduce according to kinds. Mm -hmm. And so evolution is still, after all these decades, having a hard time finding any undisputed mm -hmm. transitional form. Boy, if they found one, they could say the Bible's wrong, yeah. Genesis is wrong, mm -hmm. evolution is true. But, it's, but until that happens, I'm happy scientifically mm -hmm. to say, where's the evidence for transitions? All I see is evidence for fully formed creatures. Oh, hey, this fits Genesis. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you. I, that's just, I, I love hearing that, and I hope that our audience as well just can process that and realize, um, you know, we're looking at it from a biblical perspective, and it really does line up. Um, and we can keep waiting, but praise the Lord that there's nothing for them to find because God's Word is true, so that's what we're going to see in the evidence around us. So thank you so much for explaining what transitional forms are. And um, of course, to all of our viewers, thank you for joining in. You can find our podcast on YouTube or anywhere you find your podcast. Don't forget to leave us a rating, a review, and subscribe for future episodes. If you have any questions for us or any topics you'd like for us to address, send us a message on social media. My name is Ivana, and until next time, this is The Creation Podcast. <laughs>